Good afternoon from a uh, New York City that has almost completely returned to a normal life with a uh, characteristically abrupt and forceful comeback. A New York City that is um, bustling again with um, le its legendary uh, energy after having gone through one of the most difficult periods in its history. Welcome to all our viewers on both sides of the Atlantic. At the um, season's last edition of the Leon Ferraro conferences, um, one of our um, permanent series um, dealing with topics um, relevant here in the United States, but, in Euro but also in Europe and everywhere in the world, named after the um, founder of professional um, cultural diplomacy of Romania in the United States. Today, uh, we are talking about the international industry of national promotion, about um, national reputation and how you gain it or lose it, and about uh, image making uh, campaigns conducted by states with a special focus on Romania. Today's uh, interlocutor is um, Dr. Elena Alina Dolea, professor at uh, Bournemouth uh, University in the UK, award-winning um, specialist in international strategic communication, uh, international uh, marketing and PR and public diplomacy, and author uh, of um, 20 years of rebranding post-communist uh, Romania, an eye-opening, at a time sad, even infuriating account of Romania's efforts to align uh, its um, international uh, reputation to the new realities of her democratic life. Dr. Dolea, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for, for having me. Uh, it's great to have you um, in the program, and it's also uh, fantastic to end uh, our uh, Ferraru conferences season with a, um, such an interesting uh, interlocutor. Uh, in, our, in your research on um, national promotion, uh, you seem to avoid equating um, public diplomacy, nation branding, public relations, um, international public relations with propaganda. Um, some of the well-known authors in the field, like Kunchik or Berridge, um, show no hesitation in using the term propaganda in this context. Why this reluctance from your part? Um, yeah, indeed, I, I reject simply equating the terms um, because in, in my view, it would be an oversimplification. Uh, furthermore, I think this would uh, not allow us to grasp when these promotional practices end up uh, being propaganda. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I will start by saying that um, I am, my identity is that of a scholar in communication sciences. So when I'm approaching this topic of uh, national promotion, I'm approaching it from um, uh, a communications perspective. And, mm -hmm. and this is an important aspect because um, other scholars, um, if they approach this topic from um, political sciences or from international relations or from history or from PR or branding, as well as uh, if practitioners or experts would, um, would look at promotional practices, they might see it um, differently. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in my opinion, uh, what we are increasingly seeing is this global phenomenon mm -hmm. with nations all over the world um, engaging in strategic communication to cultivate their image. Um, and, and in that um, process, they are using a variety of promotional practices, mm -hmm. mainly um, public relations and branding. Now, I've, I've studied this, uh, and especially this um, Romania's engagement with um, a national promotion um, since um, 2008. And I would say the, 
best umbrella term to to reflect on these practices um, is um, public diplomacy, uh, mm -hmm. because states have traditionally used uh, diplomatic institutions, diplomatic networks to um, cultivate their um, their images. Mm -hmm. Now, to to come back to to this distinction between um, propaganda and public diplomacy, nation branding and public relations, um, of course, all communication is strategic is aimed at persuading, at influencing, but not all communication equals propaganda. And what makes the difference is the um, control over the communication, over what is being transmitted, but also over the process itself. So that's where I see the, the distinction between propaganda and these prom promotional practices, because um, um, there are, of course, propagandistic uh, dominant messages or discourses, but there are also alternative discourses or counter discourses. Um, and when we talk about propaganda, this is not necessarily the case. Uh, and this, of course, as a, as a, post, uh, as a scholar coming from a post-communist nation, maybe this is a nuance. And maybe this is something that I was able to um, experience even for a short period of time, but definitely to, to understand how that worked in, um, in Romania. But I, I would say in, um, this is not the case um, everywhere. And, and the difference, if you want, is between reality and how much it is you know, um, fabricated. Um, yes, so my, my yeah. final point uh, of... Package, you know, to look, uh, look great on the international scene. Um, yep, no, go on, go on. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a, a, a final point uh, to say that, um, you know, this is not to say that, that democratic states don't engage in propaganda or propagandistic messages or discourses. Of course they do. But again, there there are these counter discourses coming up from society or from different social actors within society uh, that complement, contradict, or even challenge yeah. this kind of, uh, of, dominant, um, of dominant discourses. And then the, the fracture between domestic reality and the projected um, reality um, is definitely not that high. But uh, with that in mind, I think uh, democracy is never, you know, a perfect project. So it is a good thing to, uh, you know, um, 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 call, uh, identify uh, such pro propagandistic uh, messages and, and uh, develop um, counter, counter discourses. And, and besides, I would say that, uh, you know, while uh, doing cultural and public diplomacy, you know, for a, uh, for a long time, it's very difficult, uh, especially with the technologic revolutions, you know, to conduct uh, propaganda in the old ways, you know, like packaging, you know, nice images of your country, while with the press of a button, you know, you can check all the messages, you know, the the yes. um, uh, the truthfulness of uh, everything you do. Uh, I, I personally, um, you, and we have had this conversation before, I'm not that reluctant to reject the term uh, propaganda. I think, on, on my opinion, it's um, we are conducting a more sophisticated, authentic, uh, mm -hmm. um, ready to embrace criticism form of let's say, national pro promotion, mm -hmm. um, mm, aka propaganda or whatever, whatever the term. Uh, and also related to this, um, this topic, uh, we see that some of, uh, of the countries uh, with a um, colonial or imperial past are very, very uh, reluctant to use the, even the term of um, public diplomacy. Uh, instead, they are, I'm thinking of Germany or the United Kingdom, they are using international cultural um, relations uh, because they are, as you know so well, they are talking about uh, um, uh, campaigns or uh, actions 
conducted at arm's length uh, from, uh, from the government. Uh, they are engaging in dialogue. For them, mutuality is, uh, is very important. In, on your opinion, because you are an expert in public dis diplomacy, do you see a, di uh, a distinction between, let's say, public diplomacy and international cultural relations or international uh, marketing? Or again, is it purely a matter of semantics? I would say yes and no, <laughs> and I will explain. Um, there, there is a distinction between cultural diplomacy and cultural relations, and that is um, usually linked to policy. So we tend to refer to cultural diplomacy as having um, a policy end, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas cultural relations, it's more of an organic process. It's about people to people communicating, reaching to um, um, engaging uh, with uh, one another and uh, building this uh, mutual understanding. Yeah. At the same time, I would say, yes, it is an issue of semantics because um, even um, uh, British Council, for instance, in its um, latest uh, report from January 2021 um, on soft power and international cultural re relations um, draws um, on this uh, semantics, the issue of terminology, the issue of confusion um, that exists uh, in the field, both in, uh, in practice and in, um, in the uh, field of study. Uh, and they argue that um, these um, terminological issues are um, um, having an impact on, on how to analyze and how to practice and so on. Um, but um, beyond this, you know, semantics or uh, terminology issue, um, what is happening is that different states um, and they're different institutions in charge of promoting the nation or representing the nation are basically engaging in um, sometimes similar practices, but they just define them differently. That's why um, I think, especially if one wants to analyze as a scholar, um, what different states are doing in terms of cultivating their images or uh, national promotion, it is better to look at the practices itself or themselves, and then look at the different actors and then look at the discourses of those actors. It can be state actors, it can be non-state actors. Because by looking at the practices and then at the actors and then at the discourses, we can kind of see how um, different actors define those practices uh, in a different way. Um, but also we can find explanations as to why mm -hmm. similar uh, practices um, are, are named differently. And I, I'll give you some examples maybe to, to make this more, um, to explain this more. So for instance, in, in, in Switzerland, right, we mm -hmm. have uh, Présent Suisse, uh, and President uh, Suisse is in charge of promoting the image of Switzerland. They even have a law to promote the image of Switzerland. Um, whereas um, in the United States, we'll have, okay, there, is, there was the former US United States Information Agency, which, was, um, um, which disappeared, um, but um, the State Department still has um, a branch um, um, on, on public diplomacy, for instance. Mm -hmm. So this is not to say that uh, Switzerland or the US don't engage in public diplomacy, but uh, uh, Switzerland calls it uh, PR for Switzerland, so promoting the image of Switzerland uh, by engaging in public diplomacy practices, whereas the term public diplomacy is more institutionalized in the case of the United States. So. The conclusion being that, yes, there is some sort of termin terminological fog, um, but this is also due to the multidisciplinarity of the field, because- um, so you, you have to approach it from various angles and 
people usually do that, you know? That's yeah, yes, and you um, scholars and practitioners at the same time, they are using concepts and theories from their different disciplinary backgrounds. So that's why my, uh, my view on this is, again, le let's look at the practices. Okay. What are we seeing? Uh, is this a campaign? What kind of campaign is this? What, uh, what are the aims of that campaign? What is the institution or the non-state actor conducting uh, the campaign? Why? What is the context? What are the main messages? So more about reconstructing these different aspects, I think. Um, so by reconstructing these different aspects, we can better grasp uh, also the, uh, the approach. And then by looking at how these different um, ministries of foreign affairs or um, cultural institutes or uh, NGOs, how they define themselves what they are doing, I think it's very important because this might be linked with their uh, policies in promoting uh, the nation. I, I think this is a crucial point and uh, I think we, we have to, uh, to stress this, uh, this aspect that, you know, even though the people are talking about uh, or using various <laughs> terminologies or pointing out to various doctrines, you know, when you look at the actual things that they are doing, right, you know, for instance, if the, uh, the British Council or the Goethe Institute or other institute, you know, would never use or are, is, in, are in general reluctant to use, you know, public diplomacy or cultural diplomacy or diplomacy, because they believe it's too political, it's too propagandistic. Uh, and you look to other, uh, you know, to other uh, uh, governmental agency that don't have this problem, the Americans, of course, the French and, and others. And you look what they do, actually do some of the things, I mean, are the, the same things, you know, they, we are all doing, you know, that the portfolio of, yeah. uh, public diplomacy or international uh, cultural relations or international promotions, activities, events, initiatives is frankly quite limited. You know, if you take them, you know, uh, piece by piece, you'll see that everybody does the same thing, no matter how they call what they are doing with, of course, um, uh, variations. Mm -hmm. So I think this point of looking at the, what they do actually, what actually they do and what they are, um, uh, they are how they are defining that work is very, is very important. If, uh, if, I, if I just may to add something at this point, because I think um, what you highlighted is really, really important. Uh, and because I gave this example of the British Council earlier, um, by reading their report, they, they even say, at some point, we used to um, um, literally use this phrase of cultural diplomacy ourselves, but now we prefer cultural relations. So there is even this institutional uh, discourse of make, breaking with the policy or the political branch, so to speak. Right. And um, if we are looking at what, what is happening in the political side of things, mentioning Brexit, for instance, it is often the case that uh, cultural institutes might want to just step away from what is happening in the political arena just to make sure that the two are not connected. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is just saying that <laughs> will do the, yeah. the job, so to speak. Yeah, this is a very important question, and um, I think the... Um, the, the answer is quite obvious, or maybe for many people it's quite uh, obvious. Look, um, uh, in um, today's politics, um, identity has become a major issue. Identity politics um, now uh, play a major, major role in, uh, in uh, the political life of um, many nations. Um, how important is identity in the um, uh, national uh, promotion, in image uh, making on the international scene? And what happens when a country, uh, when a country's national identity is uh, subject to harsh controversy uh, between seemingly 
uh, you know, warring factions uh, or um, for very, very polarizing, uh, polarizing uh, factors within that particular country. So how, how is this interplay between identity and uh, international promotion? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say we need to, do, uh, to draw a distinction between identity and the instrumentalization of identity in politics. This would be the first, um, the first point. Um, well, what does it mean, instrumentally? The, the way you use it or the way uh, governmental agencies arm themselves with the definition of identity in order to just explain this? Maybe this for you is very clear, but maybe our viewers are less, <laughs> are less accustomed to the um, terminology used in scientific circles. Yes, yeah, so by instrumentalization, or when I use the, um, um, the term instrumentalization, what I mean is the use of this term in, um, across a variety of discourses, uh, especially politically loaded discourses, in order to uh, score different points. Okay. Now, um, I think, again, um, identity, when we talk about states and we talk about public diplomacy, um, this might take us towards a constructivist view of uh, international relations where states basically cultivate a certain identity, how they want project a certain image, right? How they want to be perceived in the international arena. Now, this is less obvious, let's put it like this, in, in public discourses or in, um, in, in public debates. Mm -hmm. What, especially what we are more uh, used to is the use of um, identity, the instrumentalization of identity and especially national identity in debates, in the case of Romania, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, in debates around who we are after communism, yeah how we are perceived um, by others. And when I say by others, it's um, always something uh, related to the West. Okay? There was uh, historically since the 40s, the 1940s, 1950s, there was this fascination with the Americans who were supposed to come and mm -hmm. save us, right? Um, and ever since this fascination, uh, after the fall of communism, there was this idea with um, how we are perceived in the West. And then, of course, there were um, the stereotypes pr promoted heavily by the international media after the fall of communism and those images with um, orphanages, with um, um, really terrible images of a country that is really laid back in, uh, in history. And those stereotypical images have been um, uh, used by international media have been all over the world. And um, these were the ones, you know, to, to project a certain um, image about Romania. But this would be just one aspect. The other aspect, uh, when we talk about identity and especially about tensions and negotiations and so on, um, to point to, to what you were saying about having um, irreconcilable uh, groups, for instance, oh, right? Wow. Um, I think in all societies, there are stages, disruptive events uh, that um, lead to these questions about who we are. Mm -hmm. um, when I was doing my PhD, I was um, um, really surprised by how much the public space in general and the public discourse in, in Romania is dominated by this, this almost obsession yeah. um, wow. of um, how we are perceived by others and who we are, right? Um, so one of the, my main ideas for postdoctoral research was to see if in other countries there are similar debates. So when I did the postdoc in Switzerland, for instance, um, I asked um, I did interviews with policymakers, uh, and I also did media analysis, and I, I was specifically looking at debates about the image of Switzerland and about national identity. And in Switzerland, for instance, these debates 
were triggered by the passing of the uh, Stop Mass Immigration Initiative, a populist mm -hmm. brought by a populist party in 2014. This really triggered in Swiss society a lot of debates about uh, who we are as Swiss, and especially because Switzerland is such a multicultural nation. So um, it was really interesting to, to see that. And uh, then again, uh, as a Fulbright scholar at Annenberg School of Communication, I did interviews with a variety of um, um, top scholars in public diplomacy, and I asked them, is a topic of debate in American society um, the identity, the American identity, or America's image? And I recall this was in 2015, and I was oh, this is, a, this is an interesting question. Why would you ask that? And then I explained the Romanian case with uh, this topic being recurrent. And they said, mm, you know what? So far, we didn't have these debates in our society. But now Donald Trump is about to be nominated um, to run for president. And I can see that in our society, or we can see, because there are several professors that I interviewed, we can see that in society, there is this uh, emerging debate about who we are as a society, what is the impact of, uh, on America's image um, of the discourses that uh, Donald Trump and what he embodied. And uh, later, we all know what happened. So he was elected president, and then huge debates uh, and not only debates, also protests. People protested, right, uh, on behalf of the nation to put forward um, various, um, yeah, um, definitions, visions definition. about what America is yeah. or should be. Yeah. But um, uh, uh, in in your research, did you uh, did you um, encounter uh, I don't know instances where you where you uh, believe that some nations are somehow for historical reasons or other reasons are cast as I don't know countries we love to hate and others uh, almost always in a sort of uh, you know admirable positions you know so these countries that you know for for them is very very difficult to shake off uh, that uh, reputation deserved or uh, undeserved, and others, no matter what they do, uh, they continue to enjoy a fabulous reputation or they can get away with uh, almost everything. Um, this is a tricky question, to be honest, because um, I think, you know, there is the geopolitics so we'll always we will always have big powers and small powers um and big powers will always be okay better equipped um because they simply have more resources right mm -hmm. uh, and then if we think of how um th they have a long tradition institutionally speaking uh, to also, uh, uh, they have longer states, uh, stronger institutions. So it is in a way they are historically placed in a better position, right? Yes. But this is not to say that small uh, uh, states and especially younger states are not better placed for, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to be uh, admired, right? Now, the question always is, when we talk about uh, admiration or hate, by whom and why? <laughs> it's always this kind of question. So uh, if, again, if I'm thinking of, um, of Romania, right? Mm -hmm. We've always had this fascination towards the West because the West w was always um, framed as meaning progress, modernity, mm -hmm. uh, transformation, better, better life, better quality of life. And uh, rightly so, no, I would add. <laughs> rightly so. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then when there is this um, um, constant discourse about the West, um, on the one hand, you have this admiration. On the other hand, you'll have uh, counter discourses. 
Mm-hmm. But the West is, um, you know, do, does not. It, it's it's too progressive to the point that uh, we don't care about our traditions and about our values. So sometimes I think um, it's good, you know, these. Admira- this admiration is strategically used by different social actors to put forward different types of discourses that serve um, different points at different times. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting that you are making the points that, point that um, there is a difference between the approaches of, um, or at least you imply that there should be a difference and there is a difference between the approaches uh, of the uh, the great powers, uh, great present or past great uh, great powers, and the the approaches uh, available to um, smaller powers or uh, or new states. And I think I take the point that um, uh, that this is very, um, it depends very much on the you know, on the contextual um, contextual situation with regard to one's uh, reputation and nothing is lost forever. You know, it's um, a realm where change is possible, uh, but it depends on, uh, on uh, various um, uh, factors. You have, of course, you have um, worked extensively on, uh, on Romania, your PhD and and your book, and your book, and and um, a great deal of your research um, uh, focus on uh, on um, Romania. Um, uh, what is uh, what is the country's shape in terms of uh, international uh, uh, reputation? What are our reputational problems, uh, and are they serious? Uh, um, what can we do in order to uh, uh, to have a better image? You get, you see, you know, I uh, I'm uh, joining the obsessive chorus <laughs> with this uh, with these issues. But you you have worked extensively on this uh, on these matters. So um, how do you feel about these things? So. Um... I, I, I'm not sure I will give a very <laughs> um, short answer to, um, to this, but um, I, I, I don't think that, I, I think the reputation is something um, um, artificially created in a way. Um, okay, we have this global competition for attention, for um, uh, you know, getting access to um, imposing narratives and ways of, uh, of seeing um, countries and so on. Um, I, I, I don't think that Romania is badly placed. I don't think that Romania is amazingly placed. I think <laughs> it's... Um, You're a true <laughs> diplomat. <laughs> um, to be honest, what I find um, most problematic is this constant obsession in the public discourse in Romania that um, frames everything, so everything that happens in terms of um, internal politics, but also international politics, in terms of um, amazing or awful, in terms of something to be proud of or something to be ashamed of. And I think uh, this is um, a too extreme um, or radical way of, of seeing things. And um, so that you don't think that I'm avoiding the subject. So no, I think no, uh, it's, it's always a matter of policy. So um, one of the, the biggest um, um, opportunities when it comes to you know, promoting or doing national promotion is about the policies that you are making at home. So you can't say you are promoting human rights if you internally don't promote human rights, right, domestically. Um, But but this is not, this was just a a general example, so not not the case of of Romania. So uh, I don't um, think that, you know, Romania needs special promotion campaigns Mm -hmm. to promote Romania abroad. I think um, Romania needs 
those campaigns that serve different uh, foreign policy goals, not campaigns that we need to see on um, um, Euronews so or Discovery Channel or whatever. Problems, uh, in an instance forever, right? Yes. The sectorial uh, campaigns uh, that serve uh, very clear objectives. That's why. Yes, I, I strategic should... campaigns aimed to uh, achieve um, foreign policy goals, basically. That's the, at the end of the day, if I'm thinking from the perspective of the state. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, um, if I'm thinking from the perspective of other um, uh, non state actors, what I'm seeing is um, uh, very encouraging. A variety of non-state actors are actually engaging in um, in promoting uh, Romania, and I think the, the the very problematic aspect in Romanian uh, public debates around this uh, image is the idea that a certain image or one image exists. Uh, we are talking about a variety of representations, so the more um, the more we have such various representations about Romania, the, the better it is. So we shouldn't aim for uh, one image, right? Mm -hmm. We should aim for um, a variety of, of because that's, uh, this brings credibility, right? If I'm promoting uh, Romania as being innovative, for instance, yes, this holds true for certain sectors, for mm -hmm. instance, Correct. but this, does not have anything to do with other areas of, um, of Romania, for instance. So a variety of uh, platforms, a variety of discourses, a variety of practices, but always related to the actors who have strategic goals. If I'm uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I'll be looking at the foreign policy and my goals mm -hmm. and design um, actions, initiatives, campaigns that serve those goals. And it might be that they don't have to be so public. So yes, public diplomacy is important, incorporating uh, you know, more communication and uh, sometimes some uh, branding strategies might help, but sometimes you might be more efficient by just um, doing um, um, you know, traditional uh, diplomacy. How important is technology in these uh, efforts? Is it a game changer? You know, because now we have experienced a time when uh, we function almost entirely, you know, on screens and uh, in a, in a remote mode, uh, and uh, and uh, um, a lot of things have happened when it comes to diplomacy, classical diplomacy itself, but also, of course, national uh, promotion. How do you see the, um, the future of uh, international communication in nation of uh, states and nations um, with regards to technological uh, revolutions or in light of the mm -hmm. technological revolutions that we are experiencing? Um, I think the pandemic has brought us a, a, a paradox. So we're talking earlier about, you know, great powers and small powers. That's right. Uh, I think this kind of categorization has been uh, totally uh, dismissed by the pandemic. Everyone is basically in front of a computer, in front of a screen, uh, consuming social media. Now, the question is to what extent uh, different states or different um, actors uh, use social media to to communicate, and um, I've seen some 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 interesting uh, takes on this. On the one hand, um, the image of um, nations seems to matter uh, more and more because everyone is at home consuming media, right, and social media. Yes. At the same time, there is this fatigue there is this sense of uh, disconnect. Uh, there is this sense of uh, loneliness. So I would say it is uh, still early stages, but definitely um, there are no boundaries. So if you want to create some bold campaigns now on social media uh, that don't require necessarily a big budgets or big resources, significant resources, um, now it's a, it's a good time to, to do it. 
Um, and, and I've seen some very interesting um, cultural uh, initiatives happening online. Um, and I think these did not happen before. Um, and, and that was, was a, a big opportunity for me, instance. And, and uh, again, so that I don't speak very generally, um, I, um, I myself um, have consumed a lot of the um, cultural institute in London, Romanian cultural institute in London um, events uh, via social media. I don't live in London. So for me, going to London um, requires uh, travel and I'm not always that flexible to do this commute, for instance. But being able to be part of uh, literary festivals and hearing authors was really a feast, especially in these times of pandemic. So um, this, these strange times have brought these opportunities. Yeah, uh, we, we feel the same because uh, uh, for the first time, we, I think many of us were able to compete on the international level uh, with uh, much less resources, you know, with the powerhouses of uh, cultural promotion and culture with, you know, legendary uh, cultural institutions. And I think it was an opportunity for uh, smaller actors to show what they are capable of. Uh, you could have consumed uh, also parts of our program, you know, because since it's all remote, you know, you don't have to go to New York City to see what we are doing. And I hope you did that. I uh, did. I did. Especially to uh, prep for today. Okay, so I did my homework and I looked at the previous conferences. Um, what about uh, what about this information, fake news, post truth? They are all, they are all um, factors in um, international communication. They are all um, aspects, disturbing aspects of um, international communication. Um, how concerned are you about um, black propaganda, about this disinformation campaign, about these uh, new ways of um, of uh, um, endangering, uh, also uh, also damaging uh, one country's uh, reputation through these means. Um, while this is not my main area of research, um, I think this is very worrying, and it exists. Because it, at the end of the day, it, it contributes to this general fatigue. Uh, there used to be a time when we did not have access to information. And now we have too much information. And especially for, um, for the people who are on social media and don't have necessarily the expertise to analyze critically or to read critically um, different perspectives, right? Or to put into a more critical uh, frame what they are reading. I think this is uh, this is really problematic, and one of the most problematic aspects of social media is basically the echo chambers effect. So you end up in some echo chambers, and that's where you uh, will be more or less uh, trapped. Um, and uh, from from this perspective, I think that's one of the most uh, the most problematic aspect. A solution is you know, the constant um, uh, feeding of, of social media with counter discourses to black propaganda. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there is, it, it, we, don't we don't know yet if this is working, but it's definitely That's better working. than not doing anything. So, um, because at the end of the day, it's, it's this debate that is also in, um, in, in, in traditional media, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we do with these populist discourses? What do we do with these discourses that divide society? Uh, being it in national media, being in social media, for instance. Um, and the, the solution is the same. You need to um, uh, introduce, to, to add more... Um, um, counter discourses, more discourses that um, unite at the end of the day, in mm -hmm. order to show what 
uh, unites us rather than what divides us, uh, divides us, what, yeah, divides us. <laughs> Um, so I think along those lines um, is um, is what can be done, um, but it, it is a worrying phenomenon because um, especially looking at vaccination, for instance, right, and how different states have ma um, uh, managed the pandemic and how they manage the uh, vaccination, we've seen a, a lot, a lot of uh, of reactions um to that and i think constant strategic communication this is the point where really strategic communication of um, governments of institutions of um, stakeholders who need to explain very clearly what the pandemic is or, or, or not necessarily the what what the um, uh, policies right uh, mm -hmm. to counter the pandemic and what the um, um vaccination campaign you know uh, what what the vaccination is good for at the end of the day to provide information constant and strategic information on on those elements uh, i think we will uh we will end on that uh note that more communication is needed more well targeted international communication uh, is needed uh, more um focused on um things and themes that are relevant today as the pandemic or policies with regard to the pandemic or the efforts made to increase the vaccination or to, uh, to um, introduce some of the, um, uh, some of the, uh, the, the treatments that have proven um, um, effective when it comes to the pandemic, but there are obviously other, other themes. Um, uh, Dr. Dolia, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you in the Ferraro uh, conferences. Um, several points that um, one must take. Um, thank you for um, explaining so uh, passionately uh, things that maybe are um, a bit um, complicated and but for sure very uh, very important. Uh, we are true to our um, uh, hybrid approach. Uh, we have been totally transformed by the pandemic. So the Romanian Cultural Institute's um, programs here in North America will continue to be online. But at the same time, we are preparing our comeback um, in the in for the in-person events that will start in uh, in september so continue to follow our um, our uh, events our online events our permanent series they will continue throughout the summer and even in the fall when uh, we'll finally and happily return uh, to the physical um, stages um, Elena Alina Dolia, it's been a pleasure to have you uh, with us uh, this afternoon. Um, thank you. Thank you to all our uh, viewers and um, stay safe and don't go away. Thank you very much.